I think where it starts off is with um, building an ethical culture in an organization and it must reach from the top to the bottom. So if you have a top structure that um, people trust and they, um, and they are authentic and they see that um, when whistleblowers do blow the whistle, um, they are protected and something there's con con consequences towards the, what was done wrong um, and they will um, start to blow, it more, blow the whistle more. Um, what is important to note is the history of whistleblowers is not in our favour at this stage. And I want to challenge big business because my own organisation took me in as a whistleblower. Um, I was at SASH and I was a whistleblower on state capture and um, nobody wanted to employ me. And um, then my company came to me, SNG Grand Thornton, and they said they want people like me in the company. So this is a challenge to big business, to employ whistleblowers because we have an important uh, voice and it needs to be heard. If you have a strong ethical culture in your organisation, and it's not just about having a code of ethics or having a policy and procedure about sexual harassment or something like that, but you need a considerate or a um, combined um, um, a combined type of um, I, I, I'll call it a collusion between HR, between top leadership, between management themselves um, to when these things are raised to immediately react on it. They must be transparent, consistent and um, consequences must also um, be, be consistent in, in terms of that. Um, labour law must be followed at all times, but um, I think before we get to compliance and consequences, I think there's a far more important thing that must happen in terms of an ethical culture is where we create a safe space for people to raise allegations um, or questions about ethical dilemmas and where they can receive help in terms of how to deal with it. So, yeah, it's a consolidated, um, coordinated effort right through the, right the, the organisation.